Hello friends, Jason Humbert here from Welch Chapel and Stephen's Chapel United Methodist Church in Dunlap, Tennessee. As you can see, I'm in my office and kind of uh, laid back, kind of casual. I want to let you know that uh, I'm probably going to be more casual on my sermons from here on out, simply because uh, it's a lot of work to set up at the chapels to, to get the camera angles just right and, the, and, and everything together. So you're probably going to see more casual things when it comes to the sermon. But if you want to join with us on the church Facebook, it's Welch Chapel United Methodist Dunlap. It's Welch Chapel United Methodist Dunlap. You don't even have to be a member of Facebook. You just type it in Google or whatever your search engine is and go there and you can watch the live stream videos that are recorded. So I want to let you know about that. But if there's a need, if I continue to see people watching the video on here, then I will uh, continue to, to put some videos on here on YouTube of the sermon, but I'll always have my midweek message and, and Sunday sermon snippet as long as I can. So today's message, I'll get into it, uh, is entitled, uh, I Love to Tell the Story. I'm going to begin in Matthew chapter 21 and verse 31. Jesus says, truly, I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are getting into heaven, uh, in, into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came in the way of righteousness, and you didn't believe him. But the tax collectors and the prostitutes, they believed him. And even after you saw it, you didn't change your minds and believe him. So this is the word of God for the people of God. And thanks be to God. Well, in this message, uh, Jesus gives the indication that tax collectors and prostitutes are going to get into heaven before these religious people that he is addressing because of their awesome belief. But you know, faith comes by hearing. It comes by hearing the word of God preached, and it also comes by hearing the testimony of believers. I used to be so afraid to tell my testimony because I thought people would think I'm crazy, or they don't believe me, or they would think I'm too religious. I think that is a plot of the enemy, the devil, Satan himself, to try to deter you from your purpose and your testimony. In fact, uh, the, the scripture says in Revelation that we shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And our testimony is important. I automatically think of that song. I love to tell the story. It will be my theme and glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. Isn't that the truth? Uh, it's, it's good to tell the story of Jesus and his love, and it's good to tell our testimony. As I look back on Exodus chapter 17, we hear about the story of Moses. I mean, he has come out. He has split the waters with his staff, and they walked right through. The enemy was engulfed and drowned. Uh, God's power was in him as they crossed the river. And then you hear about the manna and the, the quail that are provided. But then God's people are so unhappy, they say, well, we're thirsty. It says here in, in chapter 17 and in, in verse uh, 2 that the people quarreled with Moses. And they said, give us water to drink. And he said, why are you quarreling with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people were so thirsty for water, they complained against Moses. And they said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses being the good leader that he is, because he always made everything in prayer. He said, Lord God, what do I do for these people? He says, what shall I do with this people? And they are, they are almost ready to stone me. <laughs> and Lord, the Lord said to Moses, go ahead of the people. Take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff which you struck the Nile and go. And I'll be standing there in front of you on the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it so that the father, uh, the people, rather, may drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? So Moses got frustrated about it, and he cried out to the Lord. Is that not a great testimony right there? When you get frustrated with life, cry out to the Lord God. And uh, we hear the story and we wonder, was it really true that God told him to take a staff and hit a rock and water would come out? Well, to be honest with you, 
there is archaeological evidence of this huge rock. This it's about, I think, eight stories tall. It stands out like a sore thumb, and it's split right down the center. You can see this rock is split right down the center. Huge rock split down the center. The rock formations all around are rugged. They're, they've got ridges. They're pointy. But all the rocks that are down below this huge rock are withered, rather weathered with water. Say that 10 times fast. Withered, weathered, watered. They are weathered with water. They're smooth and slick. There is evidence that there at Horeb, there is a huge rock. Go look it up on the internet. A huge rock and water once flowed from this rock. This is an amazing miracle. And yet there's evidence of it there in Horeb. And uh, I just saw a video recently about it. So this story is stands the test of time. But the, here the story was before people ever started writing things down, stories were passed by by oral tradition. They were spoken. Later on, as language developed, they started writing these things down so that they could share the Word of God with people. People didn't have a scroll that they carried around with them and said, I'm going to read the Bible today, the Word of God. No, they had to be, they had to have a priest to read it, that it was there before him, written on scrolls. But before that, you know, genealogies, words, and stories of God were passed down by oral tradition, and they were done very well. But as time progressed, people got lazy. And even though they had it written down, people stopped telling the stories. They stopped telling the salvation stories of God and his people. And God had foreordained these, these feasts and these religious days for the, the people of God to remember. And there are many different places in, in, I mean, rather many different holidays that are commanded by God for his people to remember. And right now we have uh, gone through Rosh Hashanah and, and we're heading up into Sunday evening begins Yom Kippur. Rosh Hashanah was a time of the trumpet sounding and, and praise and and. And, and, and Thanksgiving and Yom Kippur was a day of rep repentance and everything. But yet we have other, other holidays that are, that are passed on to the people of God to remember, uh, to celebrate so that they'll remember God's deliverance. They'll remember God's redemption. We have Easter today where we celebrate the, the fact that Jesus died for our sins and he rose from the grave. All these are so that we as children of God, we won't, excuse me, got, a, got an interruption there, so that we won't forget what God has done for us. So we're a very important part of the process of discipleship about telling people in this world about God's love. Because here's the thing, our testimony gives proof to that. Our testimony gives, uh, gives evidence of God is still at work. God is still alive today, and he's still, in do, still doing grand things. Now, the sad thing is, is that we often, we don't tell our testimony to people. We don't tell their, our salvation story. I remember my grandpa Sullivan telling his salvation story about how he, he went, um, his mother and his father had died very close together. And he was a young boy and he went behind the woodshed and he just cried and he cried and he was so angry at God. And it was a moment where he just experienced God right then and there. It wasn't that he saw him, but he felt his presence there and he found comfort in his tears and he accepted Christ as his Savior and he went on to be baptized. Now, here's another thing. Uh, some people have just plain stories that people need to hear. You may think that your story is not significant, but my grandpa's was because it meant something to me later down the road because I lost my mother. I didn't know my mother. She died before I was born. And so I felt that hurt and that pain too. And he knew, he said, when I got to the end of my rope, he said, that's when I got down on my knees and I prayed to God. And he said, he talked about the people in his life that were just like, they were uh, inspirations to him, just pioneers of his faith building process. There was a story about his father-in-law. And over in Seymour, in an area they call the Holler, there's some land out there, and it's a steep hill. It goes quite steeply up. 
And right there at the foot of the hill is a place, he said. And he had shown me that place when I was a kid. And I don't know if that place is still there. I'm sure it's covered up with leaves. But my papa said he even went there to pray. His his father-in-law went there and he prayed so often that there were indentions on the ground of where his knees were. That that man was just a man of prayer. He prayed for God's provision. He prayed for direction. He prayed for forgiveness. And he prayed right there at that spot and just wore the place down right there at that moment in that time. And there it was years and years later. I remember like 20 years later, those places were still there. I don't know if they're there today. I'd love to go and look. But the testimony, these stories that are told of, of how God intervened in people's lives, we're not telling them. And that's so important. It's part of the discipleship process. You know, Jesus said to go and make disciples of all nations. And we're not telling our story. That's so important. We're not we're sometimes ignoring the Old Testament stories and the relevance of those things that were then that are relevant today. We're not telling these stories of how God, because we're thinking, well, these are miracles, that miracles don't happen anymore. Those things are Old Testament things and New Testament things, and we're in, I don't know what era we think we're in, but miracles are still happening today. I love to hear stories on television and in person about how God delivered people and and from drugs or alcohol addiction or or whatever or a, a bad lifestyle, I love to tell about how I, I love to hear some people's stories are just plain and and there's no miraculous thing that happened, but the miracle is that God saved them and 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 they're out of those lifestyles that God gave them grace and love them, but yet at the same time there's there's stories that are miraculous where people have seen angels, people have. Uh, one lady said that she had drugs in her system and she said it was like the drugs just left her system and she felt normal. She was no longer high and she no longer had the a desire to shoot up with drugs. So awesome things are happening. My testimony is this, and, and we need to tell our testimonies because in Psalm 78, it says, Give ear, O my people, to my teaching. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I'll open my mouth in a parable. I'll utter dark sayings from old, things that we've heard and known, that our ancestors have told us. We will not hide them from their children. We will tell to the coming generation the glorious deeds of the Lord in his might and the wonders that he has done. Just to, and, and then he goes on to tell that story that I just told you out of Exodus about how God provided water in the wilderness. And we're not telling our redemption stories. We're not singing the redemption songs. We're not telling the stories of old about our ancestors. I'm sad to know that I can't remember any redemption stories except my grandpa's. I don't even think I know my wife's. I'm going to have to go home now and ask her what her story is of how she came to know Jesus as her Savior. I'm going to tell you mine. It's a story. I was, I was so ashamed to tell it when I was younger because I thought people would think I was crazy or they wouldn't they wouldn't believe me. But the truth of the matter is this, my friend. Look, your story, uh, it needs to be told. Satan doesn't want that story told because it's powerful. I remember I was 13 and I was fishing. And I was angry at God because I knew that he had taken my mother from me. And 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 and, and I didn't, it just seemed like things were going wrong in my life. So many, so many things that were just hurtful in my life. And so I, I, I was angry at God and I was talking to him and I said, I don't even believe in you. You're not even there. And um, there was a storm that came up and I was getting really mad. I'd lost fishing lures that day. I mean, there was just a lot going on in my head. It started raining really hard and I was mad. I was under this tree and I was cussing God. I was angry at God saying, I don't believe you're there. If you're really there, you must hate me because of all the bad that's happening in my life and it has happened. And so I said, um, I, I walked out uh, from from there. There was lightning uh, started because I had said, God, I, I'm not leaving this place. You can't make me leave from, from some rain. And so I left the pond, went to the nearest shelter, which was this, this, um, it was this old abandoned house. And I went there and I said, God, if you're really there, show yourself to me. Show me a miracle. Well, there on the pond, there was this swirl. I mean, it was like, you know, you had taken the plug out of your bathtub and the water is just going down like this in a swirl. And I saw that on the pond and I said, well, that can't be a miracle. That has to be God. Uh, he, that can't be God. That has to be like scientifically proven somehow, you know, that, that can't be God. 
And the next thing you know, I was, um, shortly after that, I said, God, you're going to have to show me something that, that I don't believe that. I saw lightning hit this tree where I'd lost, I don't know, 20 something dollars worth of fishing lures. That was a lot back in, in, in 1990 or whatever it was. And, and I said, God, I, I don't believe you. This lightning hit this tree that I was cussing God under and it fell into this pond. It was just something to see. It was really scary. And I said, lightning strikes places all the time. God, if you're real, I want you to make my horse over here Sunday. So I want you to make that horse talk. And that Tennessee walking horse, it started neighing. It started braying. It started kicking and bucking and running around wild. I said, God, you didn't make that thing talk like Mr. Ed. I wanted it to just talk. And about that time, this wind started blowing the rain in on me. And this is probably August. It was hot outside but that rain coming in on me and that wind made it real cold. And and, and it made me real cold. I started shivering and uh, I, I needed to go inside this old house. So I tried to get in the door, but there's this huge wasp nest right there in the corner of the door. As I opened that door, the, 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 the wasp, the wind blew in such a way it blew the wasp all up in my face and they were all over me. And I got one sting out of all those wasps. It was right here. I remember it just like yesterday at the age of 13. I'm, I'm 43 now. Hey, that was what, 30 years ago, if I'm doing my math correctly? 30 years ago. And that wasp stung me right here. It swelled up my whole face all across here. I got scared. I got I was by myself. It was a good distance up the hill to my house. And I was all alone. And, and it just broke me down. And I said, God, I hurt so bad. I hurt so bad. And, 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 and I need you. I don't really know how to pray. But to ask you for, you know, my grandpa told me about being saved. I don't know what it means to be saved. I don't know what it means to ask Jesus into my heart, but I, I'm asking you today, Lord, I, I need you. I, I'm the worst sinner of all sinners. If you'll just forgive me, please. I want to go see my mama. I want to be with my mama. I want to see her someday. I want to be in heaven with her. And please, if you'll just allow me to, if you'll just forgive me, if you'll just allow me to see my mama someday, I'll do anything you want. I'll straighten up my life. I'll quit cussing. I'll I'll, I'll quit I'll, I'll quit looking at at science and and saying this disproves you because now as I'm older I see pro that science really proves the existence of a divine creator of our Father in heaven. And and so I said, you know, I and and I'll do anything you want me to, even if it means preaching. My my grandma and grandpa Sullivan were always saying, you know, someday you might be a preacher. Like like Papa Sullivan, and I thought, well, no, I don't ever want to be a preacher, and I tried not to be a preacher, right? But the Lord got a hold of me in my thirties, and 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 here I am today. But he he, I, and, and he holds us to our promises. If we volunteer to do something, we say, Lord, I'll do this if you want me to. He may hold you to it. He may have you do it if you're meant to do it. And I said, um, you know, just please forgive me and please accept me in in heaven. Please accept me. And forgive me of my sins. And it was just like this bright light of, of of love surrounded me. And it was like I had a dizzy spell or something. I don't know what it was. But uh, it wasn't dizzy. It was just this bright light, this aura around me. And the rain just stopped. And it just came to like not a, more like a sprinkle, just a little sprinkle here and there. And, and eventually stopped, and, and I was just like, I walked home, and I, I was holding my face because it hurt so bad. It was, it was, it was swelled up, and I went home, and I knew that I had accepted Christ into my life. So I, I tell people that story today, and but I rarely tell it. Here I am, a preacher, and I rarely tell that story. And why would somebody believe that all these miraculous things happened, that I saw these things? Why would somebody believe this? Well, I don't know. But maybe there's somebody out there that, that that has lost a parent that needs to hear about how I hurt really bad too and how I came at the end of my rope and how I accepted Christ and how I was baptized. But yet later down the road, I, there's another part of my testimony that long, on down the road, not far from there, probably when I was 19, I, 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 I turned away from God. And, and and I went my own separate way. And in fact, I got interested in the occult and, and I delved into things of the occult. 
and um and 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 that's something that I'm ashamed of. People say, well, why? Sometimes I've heard people say when people told their testimony, well, I wouldn't have told that. Well, guess what? Somebody needs to hear it. Why would anybody in the church right now, you know, why? I doubt anybody in the church has delved in the cult, seen demons, had demons, uh, you know, that been able to manipulate people uh, to 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 gain things, to to get insight that you wouldn't normally be able to get, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, these are all things that I have experienced myself, uh, uh, but um, there might be somebody that's caught up in the occult, that's caught up in maybe Satanism or something, that's part of the occult, and who feel like they can't get out. Because I know when I got out of it, I know when I got out of the uh, occult interest that it was like demons were, well, it wasn't like it, it was. I was being physically attacked by demonic, possess, uh, not, not possession, but entities. I was being uh, attacked by uh, physically uh, with various maladies. I mean, they want to. They want you to give your soul to Satan. They don't want you to have salvation. So to somebody that sounds crazy, and I could tell you other parts of my salvation story because I left my salvation story behind and I started going my own way, just like the people of Israel. But God was waiting around the corner for me. He was waiting for me to turn around and there's a chance that I wouldn't have turned around. Uh, had I not come to the end of my rope again. I believe that there are second and third and fourth chances that we just got to keep on persevering. And you may give up in the faith, but you can't. And that's why I'm telling you today the salvation story because my redemption story is is really about, I don't know if I lost my salvation at that moment in time or what, but I believed in God, but I didn't want anything to do with God because I felt that there were other powers out there that could give me what I wanted, but they couldn't give me what I needed, amen? So we, we've got to open up our eyes to see that this we're not fighting against the flesh. This flesh isn't sinful. It's de principalities and demons and forces of darkness that are working against us to try to get us, to creating this divine, uh, not divine comedy, this, this, sage, this stage setting to get us to fail, to give up our salvation. And we need to tell these stories when we receive the salvation. We need to tell these stories. These are our testimony, and these may help somebody. Somebody out there may be listening right now to this terrible message that I'm giving because I'm not doing it very professionally. There's lots of mistakes, and I'm not going to edit it. But I'm just telling you right now, I'm just trying to speak through it. I'm telling you right now, maybe there's somebody that has experienced those things that are in Satanism or in the occult, and maybe they think they can't get out because the forces of darkness are so powerful. They have... They, they have uh, uh, you know, they have forces upon them. I keep getting these messages and I'm sorry about that. Uh, there are forces upon them that are preventing them from, from, from giving their life to Jesus. It's, it's all a lie, man. It's all a lie. The Lord Jesus, he's waiting right there and you can give your life to him. It's easy. It's easy to just turn away from those things. Those things may attack you. They may provoke you. They may tempt you. But you turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full to his wonderful face, and that all those things of the world will grace, grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. I'm just flying through this. This is a casual sermon. This is even my practice sermon for that matter. But I'm just telling you right now, this is my testimony. And you've got a testimony. It may not be as uh, supernatural sounding as mine, but somebody needs to hear your testimony. They need to know about the love of God, how God overcame your life, how he overcame your sin, how he, by the power of the cross and his shedding of blood, he rose from the dead so that we can have eternal life, amen, with him that's our testimony, friend. That is the testimony that needs to be told. And we're failing. We are failing at giving our stories. We're failing at giving our testimonies because the younger generations, they need to hear it. Whatever your salvation story is, how you came to know Jesus Christ, don't take it for granted. Somebody needs to hear it because I'm not hearing people's salvation stories and they're encouraging they are so encouraging to believers um, and non-believers as well. These are the stories that bring people to Christ. The stories of your addictions, the stories of your adultery, the stories of your fornication, the stories of your whatever the sin that is there. These are stories that people need to hear because it's not about you anymore. As Paul said, I'm a slave to Christ it's 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 about serving the Lord. And maybe there's 
times that you, you don't, there's certain things you don't need to tell certain people because they're gossips, that the Lord will put it on your heart to share your story with somebody at a certain place at a certain time. And I still believe in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is our God and he will guide us into all truth and he will send people toward us in our direction. So I encourage you today. It's time we tell the story because, you know, in Matthew chapter 21, Jesus said, look, there are a lot of people that say they believe, but they're not obedient. He said, I've got prostitutes and tax collectors. Tax collectors were people who took advantage of people and their money. But he said, I've got prostitutes. They're going to get into the kingdom of God before you do. My friend, there are prostitutes that tell their testimony, that tell their stories. They got out of prostitution. They got out of pimping. They got out of drugs. And they're telling their stories and they're leading other prostitutes and pimps to Jesus Christ. It's time we step it up a notch. And it's time we tell our story because the devil doesn't want to hear it. But somebody needs to. And the Lord is depending on you to be obedient. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And don't take for granted. God wants you to tell your story.